I'm dying zippers today. These are all replica uh, Talon zippers. And I basically, I make sure to take the order number for every zipper and the part and the description so that when I reorder them, I don't have to be confused about the parts. Now these are cotton tape. So the tape needs to be dyed to create colors. I have brass. I have nickel, vintage 1939 Talon style. So these are all the tapes. I buy all my zippers from Talon Hong Kong, which is the biggest supplier of vintage replica zippers in the market. I buy 100% cotton tape zippers these are the ones here. Now, original 1930 zippers had cotton tape. These zippers are reflective of those made by the same maker that made these zippers back in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Having the cotton tape, while it's a headache, allows me the opportunity to change the color if I need it. Now, the first step in the process is to count out the zippers I need for the run. And in this case, the first color I'm going to do is black. First, I have to count them out. Then I have to wash the sizing off. Then I have to prepare the dye at the right temperature. And then they go into the bath. Then they go into the wash. And then they go into the dry. So this is the wash component of the zippers. I have to make sure that all the sizing is out. Otherwise the dye doesn't take. I'm using eye dye, which is an awesome dye. It dyes both synthetics and natural fabrics. The eye dye has a wonderful quality of being both a fiber reactive dye, stick to cotton, and then there's a heat activated dye that sticks extremely well to synthetics. So I've salted the water, like making a nice pasta. Now I uh, put some sodium carbonate into it. This helps the eye dye adhere to the zippers, to the tape. So the concentration for the dye needs to be strong enough that the dye weight works for the zipper. The dye comes with this lovely reusable sealable tape. I use about a quarter of a cup. I have my really cool gloves on so that I won't get dye on my fingers. That's about a quarter of a cup. That dye will dissolve. Then we put the dye away. You also don't want to get the water too hot. You don't want it boiling. You want it just about three quarters to boiling, which is where it's at right about now. So that should be about dissolved. This dye is particularly good for dissolution. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna put the zippers in. Is you wanna get the zippers in a little bit at a time. I'm just gonna give these a quick stir. It's kinda of like making pasta. See, they absorb the dye very quickly. Some more pasta. And the last bunch. And then we make sure to do a slow agitation. The first dye, when you get the zippers out, they appear, they appear jet black. Okay? But this isn't always the case. They're wet, so dye appears darker when it's wet than after it's washed and dried. And then the, as you can see, the zippers have been soaking in hot water, the tape gets wrinkled. So our goal right now is to rinse out all the excess dye to see how well it took. The, the, the main issue with that is if you put a zipper in a jacket and you don't take out all the excess dye and it rains, someone's nice white shirt's gonna end up with a dye stain on it. 
takes quite a bit of water to do the rinse. So the first rinse you get a lot of black that comes out. But by rinse number two and three, it's just gray water. So if the dye fixes, the first rinse is black black, the second rinse is gray, and then by third rinse, you shouldn't have anything but sort of like a slight gray color to the water. So once I have it full, we're back to the agitation zone. And as you can see, that color of water is still pretty, pretty black. It's not dyeing my skin, so the dye is fully activated. It's not going to stick. So this is after rinse one. And as you can see, that's not bad. It's pretty black. Now that white tape there at the bottom, that unfortunately when they manufacture these zippers they use a polyester and glue so we have to hand color those later on every single zipper needs a little bit of hand coloring now on an original cotton tape zipper that would have been cotton folded over and you wouldn't need you wouldn't need to hand color that okay, rinse number two you can see the zippers in the water so you can see my hand under the water so at this point Typically what I do is I give it the old school wash, which is a lot of agitation and a massage. I'm to give these uh, the zippers a good massage, gives me good strong hands later on when I need to manipulate leather. We're now down to the third and final rinse. As you can see, the color looks pretty solid on most of these zippers. And you can also see they become quite shriveled. So our third and final rinse is to get the last bits of the black dye out. The crocking, if you will. Crocking is when leather or cotton releases dye after it's supposedly finished. If you've ever had a pair of boots and you put white socks on and you go out in the rain and your socks come out brown or yellow, that's crocking. So you don't want crocking. You don't want these zippers to crock, so we're going to finish them with a final rinse. Most brands buy dyed zippers. It makes it very convenient. You don't have to go through this process. Most brands don't use cotton tape zippers, but a lot of the vintage brands do use cotton tape zippers and they use pre-dyed. Uh, one of the complications of me being such a small brand is if I buy pre-dyed zippers, I need numbers for the order. So it doesn't make sense for me to purchase exclusively pre-dyed zippers. I need the flexibility of the color. The second thing is it's really important when you're doing this process that you dress for it. And as you can see, today I am dressed appropriately for dyeing zippers. Himmel Brothers hat, reading glasses because I can't fucking see my Clutch Magazine Made in Japan Indigo Apron from one of my many Clutch shows, Hill Brothers Sweat, Ferino Cloth Jeans, Pertolas, they go pretty well with my Indigo sweater and my Viberg boots. That's not dye, that's just water. So I got the right gear on and we're into the final rinse. Now one of the interesting things about dye is it works similar to color theory, but in reverse, right? So if something's white, it has no dye in it, a bleached zipper, you know, you've heard white has all the colors, but it's kind of the weird opposite. So to make black, you have to take multiple colors of dye and mix them together to create a black dye. So in this case, this is a blue black as opposed to a brown black. And as the dye wears out, so it's got blues and yellows and browns in it to create this black dye. I take a little dish soap, which is Liposol, and I mix a little dish soap in there. And I give it one good little dish soap rinse. And if you come over here while I'm massaging these, you'll see that 
you get a little more of that blue color with the dish soap, that purple, but that final rinse just takes everything that you don't want out of the zipper. We give it a good massage and we end up with nice, clean, dye-free black zippers. Now we get into the really tedious part of uh, this process. We take our good dish rack, I'll just put it down here, and we bring over our zipper drying rack, specially designed from my old dish rack. Each zipper has to be stretched out and flattened and sorted. As you can see, again, there's the white part, there's the pull onto the rack. Oh. By the way, these are what we call number fives, which is this classic standard size for a jacket zipper. When you have a really beefy jacket zipper, it's a number 10. And a lot of my Japanese made zippers are number eights because I like them, they're a little more durable. The narrower the zipper metal, the less strong the zipper is. Number threes are those fine skinny little ones. All right, so nearing the final step of the wet part of the dyeing process, one of the advantages of living in a house that has boiler radiator heat is I have these great 1890s radiators and they are awesome for drying zippers. So I just lay them out here. I learned when I first started this process, once I put them in the dryer, and they just turn into a giant, shriveled, terrible, unusable zippers. But the radiator is perfect because the warm, gentle heat takes that cotton tape and just dries it out nice and slow and keeps everything really flat and you get a nice finished product. Because they're cotton tape, I can customize them into colors. So in this case, I have black and I have brown that work for my jackets. But when I was dyeing them and I pointed out that the bottom where the tape seals with a sort of polyester glue that does not dye. So I have a process for each zipper. It's a little bit tedious and it's pretty basic. These are paint markers, great for graffiti, tagging, and custom coloring polyester tape on your zippers. Okay, so uh, here you got a 24 hour process to produce a finished, dyed, hand painted set of zippers for Himmel Brothers jackets.